Inside of You is brought to you by my good friends at Sonos. I, I know I've talked about this before, but I have had Sonos for so many years. Sonos speakers, uh, the whole setup at my house before Sonos was even a sponsor. And I just love them. And I kept asking, can Sonos be a sponsor? Can Sonos be a sponsor? And finally, they are a sponsor. Share the joy of listening on Sonos this season. Make the sound system on your wish list a reality with speakers and sound bars that are easy to set up. I mean, so easy. Guys, I do this. Easy to use. And they all work together so you could listen in any or every room and bring the family together with incredible sound for everything from classic carols to festive films. Sonos works with all your streaming services and control is simple with the Sonos app. Your voice using Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant and Apple AirPlay 2. Spoil the listeners in your life with a gift that keeps on giving. Treat gamers and movie lovers to an immersive home theater experience with Beam. Keep your fitness-loving friends motivated with great sound for their workouts uh, and their workout playlists with Move. And help relatives relax with hand-free control of their music and more on Sonos One. Uh, I just love having the party mode on. So wherever anyone goes in my house, they could be listening to the the song that's playing. I also have uh, a song for just chill nights where I can go downstairs and it's just chill music or go upstairs for some music. <laughs> some Seinfeld music. <laughs> some Seinfeld music um, outside for party mode. Whatever you want to do. Sonos is so easy. You don't need these bulky speakers or amps or all these things. Sonos makes it so easy. I wish you can come to my house right now and see all the goodies that I have. So uh, put Sonos on your holiday wish list. Uh, they are fantastic. And it's easy. Just go to Sonos, S-O-N-O-S dot com to learn more and wrap up your holiday shopping. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan Tejas is here. Hola. It's so exciting to have you with me. Yes. It's, it here. seems like it's been a while. It has been. We pre-recorded a couple we did. We, we did. We, we did some pre-recording. Uh, I hope you're uh, look. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, making our show a a choice in your choices. <laughs> <laughs> we're not good with words anymore. Are no, we? we're not good with words. It's uh, it was a long weekend, but uh, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you listening and tuning in. We've had some really great episodes, and uh, people have been writing in, and uh, I appreciate you writing in and telling us what you think of the show. Um, Make sure you give a review, um, email your friends, tell everyone to listen. The handles, if you want to follow us on the uh, Instagram and the Facebook are at Inside of You Podcast and on Twitter at Inside of You Pod. Um, reviews are, are wonderful and uh, spreading the word, spreading the gospel. Thank you to all my patrons out there who uh, give back to the show and uh, they're a real big part of why the show is still going. And uh, Ryan's a big part of why it's still going. I love having Ryan with me. And uh, thanks to Jason, my editor, and Bryce, my producer, and uh, Cumulus Radio for uh, believing in the podcast. Uh, we've got a great episode today. Um, Rain Wilson. He's Rain back. Wilson. And Rain, you know, he's got this podcast, Metaphysical Milkshake, with Reza Oslin. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's great. It really makes you question or think think of the questions of life of you know why we're here and what we're doing and uh i just uh I, I love having rain on the show because he's such a bright guy and he's so friendly and i get intimidated sometimes when people that are a lot smarter than me are on the podcast and so i was like well what are we going to talk about and at the end i felt like hey you know it, it worked out and uh, i got to remember to tell myself <laughs> that you know hey you could do this you're interviewing people you're you, you can do this man um, but uh, I try to have good conversations with people and it was easy to have a conversation with him. Did you enjoy it? It was good. You were afraid of getting deep and you went there and it was fine. We got a the little water deep. was fine. The water was you fine. Swim. Tasted great. It was great. Um, like a milkshake. Hey, I'm going to be at LA comic con December 4th and 5th. And we're doing a smallville nights in LA, Tom Welling and I. So get your tickets for LA Comic Con, the 4th and 5th. The 4th is the big Smallville Nights. We've already sold a lot of tickets. It's an intimate evening. We read scenes with fans. I put on a bald cap. It's pretty funny. <laughs> and uh, we have a blast doing that. I hope you're having a marvelous week. And I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I yeah. mean, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Uh, let's be thankful and grateful and all that stuff in between. Um, 
But without further ado, why don't we get into the amazing um, Rain Wilson? It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. You pulled up in the car and I go, look at you. You look refreshed. And you went, oh. Yeah. What, is that? what, what was that? You were one of these guys like myself that you're hard on yourself, aren't you? Sure, I'm hard on myself. I think probably most of your listeners are angst-ridden, hard on themselves, <laughs> complicated individuals. Sure. Because you, cause you are and we are. Yeah. Um, uh, refreshed is hard. It's hard. I, um, well, I'll be honest with you. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, died last night. How do you like that? Uh, I don't like it. Yeah. You know, it's really fucked. If I may say F on yeah. the show. Mm -hmm. You're asking yourself for yep. permission to say fuck well, on your own if, podcast. If it's okay with you. Fuck. Uh, yeah. You, you might, <laughs> you might not be one of those guys that want to say the F bomb on the show. Ryan, say it just so we feel better. There it is. Is Ryan Fuck. the new, is he like sidekick or He's, he's my engineer, engineer and he what? chirps in here and there. You know, he takes notes and um, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a he personality. Does he see this as his portal to, to fame? This I think his... he's already famous. <laughs> no, nope. no, you're supposed to skyrocket me to superstardom. That's, yeah, that's that was, exactly that was what the I'm going to do. He's, uh, just, it's still the plan, Ryan. He's banking on Lex Luthor. He's better looking than, <laughs> than you are. Jesus, he threw out the Lex Luthor. Did you hear that? I did. That wasn't he's, kind. He's better looking than you are. But he is. He's very, Lex Luthor or Ryan? Ryan. Ryan. Ryan is better looking than I am. You know, first of all, I'm incredibly sorry, but like the last time you came here, the night before your dog died. Wow. This is uh, this is probably the last time you're going to do this podcast. <laughs> the next time I do it? Just call after me after I someone. <laughs> Maybe after you die? Yeah. Ooh, Maybe I'll die right here in your podcast. That would chair. be ratings would go this up. Is, this is getting very macabre very fast. What, but yeah. the um uh I did a film uh two years ago, two and a half years ago called Blackbird that no one saw. I like all of the films that I do, uh, with um Susan Sarandon and Kate Winslet, among others. Wow. And uh Roger Michelle was the director. He's who passed away. And uh he did Notting Hill. He did this movie Venus with Peter O'Toole, and he's done a lot of just terrific film, Changing Lanes, I think, with Ben yeah. Affleck. Um, he's got a new one coming out uh, called The Duke. It's a British film. He's just a classy- How old? 63, something like that. See, this is what scares me. Was it, was it, a, a, just, it just happened? Heart attack, yeah. Yeah. I don't know any details of that other than that. So, but, you know, way too young. And he was a really special dude. I mean, he was just- kind insightful sensitive uh you know devoted collaborative smart as hell really wickedly wickedly funny um so it's a bummer i'm sorry yeah uh, how do you deal with i mean how do you deal with death i mean is it something that just you think about all the time you think oh i'm, I'm in my 50s now uh it's you know hey, not don't, that don't date me here <laughs> Well, uh, you know, just did the, you print I, out my Wikipedia page? There? No, I just I wrote some things down that I probably won't even even discuss. You know, can can Ryan finish the interview, please? Ryan, <laughs> tell me about how Rain feels about death. <laughs> no, I mean, can he interview me? Yes, can Ryan, it just be me and Ryan. But ask him that first question. Yeah, how do, you, how do you feel about death, Rain? You... Thanks, Ryan. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, this has been the year of death for me. I'm sorry to get all crazy. This is where to do it. This is where to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm. Uh, yeah. This has been the year my father died 13 months ago. Oh, and then I lost two friends to cancer during this last year. And now, you know, Roger passed away. And he was, we were friends, but it's not like we were like hung out all the time or anything like that. But my other two friends were very, very close to me. And no one from COVID. I don't know anyone who's passed from COVID. I mean, I've heard of friends of friends and relatives and whatnot. But uh, uh, I... Um, yeah, so it's been a lot of death this year. I feel the same pummeled. way. I, you know, in the last year and a half, I lost my grandfather, who was my best friend. I lost my sister. I lost my uh, dog, Irv. Uh, you Your know, sister? My sister. My have a half sister. Okay. From my dad's uh, second marriage, and uh, she was sick for a long time, and she passed away. And it's just been one thing after another, and um, you know, 
I, t- I, I, I think, oh, you know, you're doing all right, you know, but I don't deal with things well. I sort of bottle them up or I just hide them away and they come out, they manifest themselves in different ways and mm-hmm. then they come out and... Uh, come out sideways, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you do? I mean, were you close with your father? Um, you're going to make me cry. Well... You're going to make me cry. Well, you know, I mean, I cry. I've cried on this podcast. People have cried on this podcast. Have they really? Yeah. Or you could just say, fuck off. I'm not answering that. Have you cried on this podcast? Me, not yet. No. No, but there has been Bobby Lee, you know, the comedian. I know Bobby. He cried on here about his father's death. Jennifer Love Hewitt cried on the podcast. Yeah. It's not something I just, I urge people to cry. I just, you know, I try to like get inside of. What if love was everyone's middle name? Bobby Love Lee, Rain Love Wilson, Michael Michael Love Love Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum. That'd be ironic for I th- me. I think because you've never known love. <laughs> I've never loved myself, <laughs> Rain. <laughs> that's hysterical. Um, so yeah, I think so. Last time, I don't know when we. I was on two, three years ago. Sometime I was on your podcast. I had a great time. Loved it. Still get people who are like, "I love it inside of you, bro." Like you <laughs> yes. got a nice, uh, a nice loyal following out there, and. Um, we, we got deep, I remember, and we talked a little bit about spirituality, faith, my family, et cetera. And yeah, my dad and I, like most fathers and sons, we had a very complicated relationship. So my mom took off when I was two years old. So I went and stayed with my dad. So my dad was the only kind of, I didn't really see my mom again from between two and 15. Usually it's the mom, the dad yeah. that takes off, yeah. right? Yeah. So opposite for me. And then- so he was the only constant through my life. I didn't have any siblings. He was tried and true. He always was very supportive of me being an artist, being an actor. Um, you know, he was always there for me. At the same time, he was very, he had had such a traumatic childhood himself. He was really completely cut off from his emotions. So I didn't get the the warmth, the hugs, the nurturing um, the, I didn't get kind of listened to the essentials, to the essentials. I feel the same way. That's, so, oh my God. It's like a, a so, mirror. Here. So he's there. He was there, but he wasn't really there. So I really loved him. And yet there was always this kind of disconnect. Now, truth be told, he really tried hard in the last like three to four years before he passed. And he was 79 when he died. We had gone through a lot together and healed a lot together and, so there was there was even greater intimacy. So believe it or not, even in his late seventies, there was a, a great more uh, expression of love between the two of us. So how do you do that though? When not having that connection, not having that bond for your ninety percent, ninety five percent of your life yeah. with a man, how does that start? Was it something you started to do, or did he reach out, or um, you know, because that's that's a hard thing to start start up so late in life like the, uh, some kind of bond or him trying. I feel like I've done that too with my father. I wrote him this letter that was passionate, but it was also very hard on him and just saying, hey, fuck, you've got this wonderful kid out in Los Angeles and you could have so much fun with and you shit on it. And, you know, it took time. And then he started to come out of his shell a little bit and was nicer and trying harder and trying harder with my family, my grandfather when he was sick with Alzheimer's. But, um, you know, it took me writing a letter that was just like almost like a fuck you letter. Yeah. And, but it wasn't easy and I didn't think it would happen. It was almost like every day I'm like, oh, he's being nice today. How long is this going to last? Hmm. You know, but uh, how did that start for you? Well, we had, we had some ups and downs and we had some letters. We had some angry letters go back and forth. A lot of it for me was through my work in therapy. Um, and uh, sorry to sound like a cliche, but you know, that old phrase, like, don't go to the hardware store for milk. And I kept going to the hardware store for milk in terms of Mm -hmm. kept going to my dad for a kind of love he was incapable of giving me. So once I was able to kind of really deeply do that work and get out my resentments and my hurt and my trauma that I had experienced vis-a-vis him and just accepted him uh, on a deeper level, I think most of the work was actually mine to do, not really his to do. Right. Because- he he was trying in his own way and it might have been very limited but i did see him making an attempt to connect and 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 have more of a heart uh, little con- things little things little connection and and so then i had to stop being like you know 
I, he, he's never going to meet my needs. My unmeetable needs are never going to be met by my dad. I'm never going to get that hug that is like, Rain, you matter. You are incredible. I see you. Um, uh, he would say, I'm proud of you. Like, I'm so proud of you, all your acting work. And oh, you were great in that movie. And I, I loved it. And good work in that. Like, so he was that's, supportive. That's, that's cool. So that's good. But never like, really like, how are you, son? How are you? What is going on with you in your soul? I want how... Let's, you know, is this, this is, this is my relationship with my father. This is therapy for me. This is exactly right. It's like, you know, why don't you bring your, your dad on the pod? Oh my God. No, 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 no. no. Why don't you let me interview him? Oh boy. On a special inside of you. You Wilson interviews Harvey Rosenbaum. Listen, I know all about your relationship because I lived with my father, Mark. That's my dad. And I could just see you talking to my father. He would be completely closed off and freaked out. (laughs) <laughs> he doesn't, you know, he's, again, when you were saying, uh, I, I've never heard the word, you know, I love you. He mm. said it once in that letter. Like, if you ever don't think I love you, read this letter or something like that. But never, I love you, proud of you. Uh, really, how are you doing? Like, uh, I think he just says it to say it. And then like, okay, good. But how you doing? I could say anything. I could say, I just took a shit. Okay, great. So it's not really deep. It's just very, everything's always been surfaced. And for me to try and think it's going to get any more than that, I'm crazy. It makes me a crazy person because it's just not going to happen. It's not in him. And it's me wanting something that's just never going to happen. Yeah. So I feel like there's a similarity there. Would he ever go to a therapy with you? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, I, you might want to try. One, one of the things I did, I was going through, this was a while ago now, 10 years ago, I was going through a really dark time and I went through this intensive therapy program um, and then I went back and I brought both my parents. I brought my dad and my mom to do some work with me, just each one for like two or three days, like three or four sessions. So it wasn't like 20, 12 hours a day or something like that, but it right. was, it was intense. And did you cry? I did cry. Yeah. Yeah. I cried a lot. And in uh, front of your father. Sure. I've never yeah. cried in front of my father. Yeah. I feel like that would just be, I, I couldn't do it. That's why you should let me interview him. I'll cry in front of your father. <laughs> I can't imagine, like you, I'm sure this has been said by many people out there listening, but I can't imagine my father going to therapy with me. It just wouldn't happen. He wouldn't open up his story. It's one of those things where his story is completely different. Well, did he go through a lot of, let me just jump in and say, did he go through a lot of trauma or does he come from generations of closed off men? Closed off men. My grandfather's pretty closed off, but incredibly loving to his grandkids. There was not, not a better man to me mm. and a role model than my grandfather. Mm. And I think that kind of probably bothered him at mm. the same time it, he he liked that I had a relationship with his father, but uh, it was closed off. And, you know, I remember him saying something. He was like, well, you know, I was hit. I go, you were abused? No, but I got spanked. And I go, okay, you know, I got hit. He goes, oh, I never hit you. I go, dad, seriously? Are you telling me that I never was hit? And, and he just threw it away. He's like, eh. Anyway, what I was trying to say is he didn't want to talk about that. Didn't want to go there, yeah. No, he has a def- very different memory and um, well, I'll give it to my dad for for showing up to that because that was he never liked therapy, he never trusted therapy. He always said like psychology was a soft science, and it was mm. you know he he viewed psychology and and, and consulting what you know what what is that called? Um, you know, let me say that again. He he viewed you know therapy as essentially the same as like rainbow crystal meditation and essential oils. You know what I mean? Like it just is yeah. all in this yeah. new age and, and and nothing against new age even, but he just viewed it all as this kind of poppycock. Right. Um, so for him to come uh, meant a lot and he was trying to make those little steps. So I, I will stay grateful about that. Yeah. So there's so many of my needs were not met and yet super grateful for what he was able to give. And Did, yeah. the, 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 the tiptoeing steps he took toward me over the course of his and life. And your mom was in there too? Um, I think there was like one or two sessions where they were together. So that was weird. So my birth mother who left when I was two and my dad, both in their mid seventies or early seventies. And um, but then I had God. some, and then mostly kind of separate with them. Cause it wasn't much to talk to, to them, but um, 
Yeah. And uh, boy, there's a lot more I'd like to say, but I still have parents and relatives that are still alive and I can't, I can't completely go there. Dark so, shit. Yeah. Some darker stuff. Yeah. Inside of You is brought to you by my good friends at Sonos. I, I know I've talked about this before, but I have had Sonos for so many years. Sonos speakers, uh, the whole setup at my house before Sonos was even a sponsor. And I just love them. And I kept asking, can Sonos be a sponsor? Can Sonos be a sponsor? And finally, they are a sponsor. Share the joy of listening on Sonos this season. Make the sound system on your wish list a reality with speakers and sound bars that are easy to set up. I mean, so easy. Guys, I do this. Easy to use. And they all work together so you could listen in any or every room and bring the family together with incredible sound for everything from classic carols to festive films. Sonos works with all your streaming services and control is simple with the Sonos app, your voice using Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant and Apple AirPlay too. Spoil the listeners in your life with a gift that keeps on giving. Treat gamers and movie lovers to an immersive home theater experience with Beam. Keep your fitness loving friends motivated with great sound for their workouts. Uh, in their workout playlists with Move and help relatives relax with hand-free control of their music and more on Sonos One. Uh, I just love having the party mode on. So wherever anyone goes in my house, they could be listening to the, the song that's playing. I also have uh, a song for just chill nights where I can go downstairs and it's just chill music or go upstairs for some music. <laughs> some Seinfeld music. <laughs> some Seinfeld music um, outside for party mode. Whatever you want to do. Sonos is so easy. You don't need these bulky speakers or amps or all these things. Sonos makes it so easy. I wish you can come to my house right now and see all the goodies that I have. So uh, put Sonos on your holiday wish list. Uh, they are fantastic. And it's easy. Just go to Sonos, S-O-N-O-S dot com to learn more and wrap up your holiday shopping. Inside of you is brought to you by Geico. Hey, it's Geico, <laughs> folks. Uh-huh. I do love my Geico. Oh, do you? Oh, yes. I oh. do love Geico. You know, uh, whether you rent or uh, own your home, we've got so much crap around, you know, the holidays and all these things to do. It's like, why do you want to pay your homeowners to one person and a renters to another, your auto policy to another? Make it easy with Geico. And they have this wonderful thing called Ryan A. Bundling policy. That's correct. It's a bundling policy. Bundling policies with Geico. It's a good thing. We're already busy. We have so much to do around our home, and it's easy. Here's all you do. You go to Geico.com, G-E-I-C-O, if you don't know how to spell it. Geico.com, you get a quote, and you see how much you can save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Even a Rosenbaum can do it. Inside of You is brought to you by my good friends at BetterHelp, BetterHelp Online Therapy. Boy, I can't tell you how much this works. I get emails all the time. Thank you for talking about BetterHelp. Thank you for getting me into to therapy. Ryan does BetterHelp. I do. I just, you know, uh, I just had a friend this morning. I was FaceTiming with him and his wife said, you know, my kid's uh, dealing with depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know any good therapists? I go, well, BetterHelp Online Therapy. Because they're in the middle of sort of nowhere and you don't need to go anywhere. You can FaceTime or text or, you know, it's it's better help is just uh, it's amazing. It's, it's helped you out. Yeah, it's uh, it's convenient. And, it's uh, convenient. Yeah, yeah it, it has been good. I have gotten a lot out of it. Well, I like that. Look, whether you're struggling with grief, relationships, or stress, or having trouble sleeping or meeting goals, online therapy might be for you. BetterHelp is secure online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with a licensed professional therapists. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own accredited therapist. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And you don't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Therapists have a broad range of expertise, which may not be available in your area. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime, folks. Send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. 
BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if you need. And that may happen. You know, you, you meet someone the first time, you may not vibe with them, you change a therapist. BetterHelp, it's that easy, and I, I completely recommend this. Uh, so many people have told me it works. Uh, it's more affordable than traditional offline therapy by a landslide, if you ask me, and financial aid is available. Visit betterhelp.com slash inside and join over the 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, Ryan, that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Inside of You is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash inside. That's betterhelp.com slash inside. Give it a shot. BetterHelp. You know, you know, last time we talked, I remember we talked about The Office briefly. We didn't really get into The Office because, you know, everybody knows a lot about The Office. It's like, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, we don't have to talk about it. Everybody loves The Office. You were loved. You're a loved character. But I remember you saying something pretty profound. You're like, I was a bit of a, a dick or I was maybe a little hard at a certain point on that mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. And do you think, because I look at the podcast now and, and Soul Pancake, which – you know, founded Soul Pancake to create a space where people from all walks of life could discuss and question what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. And do you think that there was something that happened to you maybe while filming on The Office or the, or the way you were or the way you felt like you were that you needed to change? So you started doing things like metaphysical milkshake, which we'll talk about, and all these spiritual things and getting in, in the Baha'i faith, uh, faith and things like that. Do you think that is it, did it start kind of back then or, or soon after? It's kind of finding yourself, who you are. Well, you know, part of it is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be like Mister Hollywood Recovery Guy, and there's a whole bunch of people talking about that. But I am in recovery. I have experience with the twelve steps, and I've had, you know, issues with alcohol in the in the distant past. And so for me, it's part of that process. So it's it's like, um powerlessness and unmanageability um, around stuff. And that goes hand in hand with ego, narcissism, and entitlement of being an addict. And then all of a sudden you add fame and throw fame into that mix, right? Your character defects swell up and uh, uh, flare up and whatnot. And at the same time, I'm trying to, you know, connect with my higher power and, you know, become more spiritual and more grounded in my spiritual life and trying to be a better person, sometimes succeeding, sometimes not. So it's, it's like all, this, what I'm describing is like all of us. You don't have to be an addict to have, be going through this. This is, what, this is what we do. We have battles with our ego and we have times when we're, we're trying to make ourselves and the world a better place. So it's, it's part of this struggle. But I will say that those early years of the office, especially like 2006, 2009, right in there, like there was, I was all of, I went from this unemployed character actor to all of a sudden being like completely recognizable in this huge TV celebrity. And, right. and then was getting leads in a lot of films and getting offered a lot of stuff and, and money and all, we were always broke, my wife and I, and all of it. So that will inflate your ego and your narcissism too. It was it was a tremendous challenge. So Soul Pancake, the digital media company, which has now kind of been subsumed by Participant Media, which is an even larger uh, media company, was part of my, yeah, it's part of my attempt to kind of understand myself and other people, what it means to be a human being, that we're all on a philosophical journey, we're on a psychological journey, uh, we're on a spiritual journey, you know, we're on an artistic journey. Yeah. And- and Metaphysical Milkshake, the, the podcast that we're doing is kind of born out of that and that that whole process. Is it one thing or many things that you do, a process, like a daily process? Like if your ego gets in the way, are you mm -hmm. aware of it? And you go, Rain, that's your ego. And I have this tool to say that this is your ego and that's not where you should be coming from. Do you have certain tools that you use so, when something's, something arises that you don't like about yourself or you're upset about something? That's a great question. And basically, you know how if you have diabetes, you might have like a, you have to like prick your blood or you wear a band or something and it monitors like your blood yeah. sugar level or your heart rate or blood pressure or whatever, or insulin levels, et cetera. 
like there's that monitoring, like I have to do a daily monitoring of myself for on a number of different levels. Every day. Every day I have to monitor. It's, it's not in, intensive. I just kind of several times a day, I just have to take a few deep breaths and check in with myself. Right Where's my anxiety? Uh, because I've had an anxiety, this diagnosed anxiety disorder. You too, high five. Yes. Um, <laughs> I wish I didn't high five you on that one. Um, <laughs> I know. And I've, I've had depression uh, in the past and very serious depression. And, um, and also I have to check my entitlement, arrogance, ego stuff as well. That's one of the things I need to be checking in on. I always say like, you know, what are the tools? Like I have to exercise a lot and I have to meditate uh, pretty or pray and meditate pretty much daily in order just to get to normal. It doesn't like, it doesn't wow. make me, if I, if I, if I meditate for 10 or 15 minutes and pray, turn things over, if I'm exercise, it's not like all of a sudden I'm like Mr. Zen Dalai Lama. I'm just like operating as any normal American in Los Angeles would. So if I, I'm operating at deficit, if I don't do that work. Right. I mean, do you get anxiety attacks still to this day? Um, I would say I would, I, I get close. I get close. Most of my anxiety attacks were in my twenties right. and then I had some in my forties, but it's been a while now. It's been at least. What do you do? Like besides you meditate? Mm -hmm. You check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. Are there other things, other tools that work for you that might work for someone else? Like, like I wake up with anxiety. I feel, you know, rain's coming over. It's got to be a good podcast. I got to do this. And I, uh, you know, I feel a little overwhelmed at times or just for, with little things. I think that even the little things overwhelm me. Would it have killed you to wear a little bit nicer shirt? What's wrong with this one? This is a good color on me. Oh, you went with the color? Because it's an old yeah. t-shirt. You put on like an eight-year-old t-shirt well, you wore a t-shirt yeah this is a long sleeve and it's it's a little i think it's sexy <laughs> you just did a little a sexy shimmy, move a shimmy yeah you shimmied anyway um what was the question but like the tools the tools, the tools that you yeah. use like you know something i could use you know rosenbaum this might help you or one of your listeners i do this every day i meditate for 20 minutes to this music or to to nothing yeah. or what is it well i i certainly i i meditate and I pray and I act and I exercise at least five days a week. And wow. it's not like I'm in wicked shape, but I, I just kind of need to do that. And I have like one thing that really helps very specifically is, um, so human beings are wired to be fearful and we're wired to be negative because that's what kept us alive for 100, 200,000 years. You know, if the, if the bushes are shaking over there, it's like, oh shit, the bushes are shaking. Oh, there's a lion in there. So we're kind of wired. Fight or flight stuff. Yeah, for danger and, uh, uh, you know, and in socialization, we're uh, very wary about and concerned with like status and where we are and how we're perceived and whatnot. And so um, gratitude is an incredibly powerful tool. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of podcasts on gratitude and a lot of writing has come out, especially in the last like five years, but like with a group of friends of mine, we have a gratitude text chain. So every morning we send five things that we're grateful for. And it sounds so dumb. It sounds no, so No, I've done that before too. Yeah. I have. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that uh, I have a, a, you know, my dog is uh, with me and I'm not alone in the house. I'm, yeah. It could be anything, right? Yeah, anything. Yeah. I, I, today I texted, I'm grateful for the turkey sandwich I had, you know, it's uh, but it just, <laughs> it, that little bit of a shift that little 1%, 2% shift of your perspective through gratitude is a is a big help. It really does help because we can live in a, and my tendency is to live in a perpetual state of anxiety and discontent with how things are and what my life is. So if I can shift towards gratitude and love and serenity, just even a little bit to counterbalance that, like realizing like, look, I've, I've got my health and yeah, a lot of people died this year, but you know, a lot didn't. And yes, you know, <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. my family's still together and I get to do cool creative work and I get to go on the inside of you podcast. <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's wonderful, there's wonderful things. I have a nice red pants and a nice. Are those red? Gray. I'm shirt. colorblind. I really yeah. didn't think they were red. Yeah. They're reddish. They're like brick, uh, brick red. Yeah. Well, they're nice. It's a nice yeah. pant. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. So pray. 
meditation, mm -hmm. uh, gratitudes. Mm -hmm. Those are the three keys. Those are some of the keys, yeah. You mm -hmm. do it before you go to bed. You sit there and close your eyes and say what I'm grateful for before you sleep at night. I haven't done that, but that is a very good idea to do. Because people, they have, the studies, gratitude is, is an incredible tool. The just Google it if you're out there. Just the studies on gratitude, like you, you get sick less, you live longer, you get more you know, raises at work and promotions at work. Like uh, people like you better, you gain social capital through being grateful. Like there, uh, gratitude is, an, it's like a wonder drug. Do you say your gratitudes, Ryan? No. You no. never say what you're grateful for. No, I mean, no, not in, not in this kind of, uh, yeah, no, it's not something I've ever focused on. Do you on, meditate? No, I can't, no, I don't meditate either. Do you pray? Uh, nope. Okay, so none of the three. Yeah. <laughs> But but Ryan is not as complicated as you and I. I mean, no no offense. I mean, I'm he sure gets, you, he gets anxiety. I'm sure you got stuff going on, but yeah. but no, you I'm, seem like a peaceable lad. No, I'm like a bowl of oatmeal. That's uh yeah. <laughs> what is that? What mean? is a bowl of oatmeal? That's just pretty plain. I don't it's, think you're that plain. I'm just kidding. But you don't think you you don't let things get to you as much. Uh, I mean, I can let things get to me, uh, but I mean, I probably should be doing these things, all these gratitudes and things, because this has been a stressful year and this is mm -hmm. just, there's just been a lot of, uh, going to bed very anxious. Yeah. Mm. I think I need to change my ways. I think I need to make it. I mean, I think that's the first step is like, if you're doing the same thing, expecting different results, we know what the answer yeah. is. Mm -hmm. But if, if mm -hmm. I just wake up every morning and I say my gratitudes and I pray and I exercise and I, I'm already in the right. Mm -hmm. on the right path and mm -hmm. you 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 guarantee me this will help in some way <laughs> guarantee me this, this is right? a hard guarantee here yeah sure all right yeah i guarantee that it, this will make a difference you okay. know but i think the other thing that we, we had started off talking about um ego mm -hmm. and i do think like a in whatever way you can do it in therapy and journaling, you can do it in 12 steps. There's so many different ways to do it. Just talking to a friend, but just recognizing like when my ego perceives a threat, when I'm in my ego, when I'm in um, my self will and getting defensive, prickly, and comparing myself envious, all of this stuff, the stuff of ego, like that needs to be monitored. You know, we have to like have like a heart monitor and be taking the temperature of that creature and accept it. It's part of us. We have egos because we're part chimpanzee and we want, you know, we right. want good stuff for ourselves and yeah. it's what's kept us alive. There's nothing evil about it, but it can dominate us and it can, and it's not who we are. We are spiritual beings living a human experience. We're we're riding around in these meat suits. We get 80, 90, 100 years. You know, if you're unfortunate, like Roger Michelle, you get 60 some years. If you're fortunate, like Norman, Norman Lear yeah. is 100 years old, you know, but whatever it is, it's a handful of decades in the meat suit, but we're luminous, radiant beings that are beyond our ego. And so I do think that there are also spiritual tools that you can find from so many of the spiritual traditions that can help us on this to navigate this journey. What's a book to read that you'd say the one book, if you're just getting into this and you just want to find some peace, what's that one book? The Dhammapada by the Buddha. The Dhammapada by the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Easy read, pictures? Easy read. No <laughs> pictures, but honestly, an easy read. The One of the great things about the book, and it's important to read like the Dhammapada. Don't read like Buddha of the day quotes because most of those are just made up. And in fact, there's websites of like, what is what really did the Buddha say? And what's just like made up? Because people are just slapping stuff on like, take a deep breath and love yourself, the Buddha. You know, they'll just like slap up a new age quote right. and then <laughs> contribute it, attribute it to the Buddha. So, but the the study in Buddhism is all about this, um, this clutching, grasping attachment to ourselves, to the, our wants, to our egos, to the stuff of the world, including what we're, where the milieu that we work in in Hollywood in terms of fame. Um, but all this grasping, clutching, wanting, never enough, uh, I'm not enough comparison. Not enough. Um, that's all stuff of the ego. And it, through some very simple perspective shifts and exercises, you can just you can just step away from it a little bit, just kind of step outside of your body and witness it and go, oh, look, there's my ego doing its thing. Oh, bless you, ego. You're trying to protect me. You're trying to take care of me. I love you, but I'm not you. 
Wow. I sounded wise all of a sudden. <laughs> you really did sound wise. I, I was, should, I I was enamored. I was yeah. enamored. Yeah. You know, I have a thing where you know, some therapist once told me if you, when you have anxiety, it's like you're in the driver's seat. And you could say, hey, fucker, you could be back there, but I'm driving. Like, I know you're there, but don't let it take you over. You're still in control. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I try to, I also try to stop myself when something's happening. We're like, why stop it? What is the wrong right now? What can happen to you? Can you die? No, you can't die. I, I actually say this out loud. Mm-hmm. Have you done this before? Yes. Have you been a success? Yes. Why are you going in? The, I, I talk to myself. Is that yeah. weird? Do you ever do that? I don't think that's weird at all. I think whatever works. I mean, for me, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe your therapist suggestion is good and different things work for different people. For me, it's just recognition. Yeah. Like if I just kind of take a deep breath, <sighs> Rain, you're really anxious. Look at you. Oh, you're worrying about this and you're worrying about that and you're worrying about that. Oh, wow. Wow, check that out. Okay. Then I immediately feel better. I just, I didn't change anything. I just noticed that I was anxious. It's like noticing the ego. Acknowledging noticing, it. Acknowledging it. Just, just seeing it, no judgment. I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to push it down. I'm not going to like get over it or get through it. I'm just, I'm just witnessing it. And then, then we're all of a sudden, we're just more whole. Like, oh, I see, you know, you, you know, it's like, we're not our thoughts. You know, I don't know, Eckhart Tolle, I guess for a second book, besides the Dhammapada, the Buddha, anything by Eckhart Tolle, you know, the power of now or a new earth, um, especially his audio books. I love hearing his weird Austrian gremlin accent is it uh, like a Werner herzog kind of feel to it it's a little bit Werner herzog he's yeah. more extreme but but yeah eckhart tolle is like there is only now why are you here what no, that's <laughs> I'm, do I'm doing it terrible but anyway you trust me the audiobooks are great i listen to them all the time and sometimes i'll just i have them on my phone and i'll if i'm feeling anxious i'll just like just i don't care what chapter just hit eckhart tolle talking to me and i'm just like <sighs> and that's what you do in your car a lot of times. You'll listen uh -huh. to these in your car. Instead yeah. of music, instead of thinking, you just... Yeah, yeah, it, yes. When I, when I, in high stress, that's there's another tool. There's another tool. Eckhart Tolle audiobooks, a great tool. But his whole thing is like, we're not our thoughts. We're not our feelings. Right. We have thoughts, we have feelings. That's not who we are. Because we are able to rise above those and go, oh, look, I'm having thoughts. Oh, look, I'm having feelings. So whatever that is, that consciousness, that's... That's a higher consciousness. That's kind of a higher part of ourselves that's able to just lovingly detach just a little bit and float away from uh, all of that. It seems like it's just really acknowledging it. Like, okay, you're stressed right now. Why are you stressed? Oh, because you got this? Okay. It's just kind of acknowledging it. Like, this is why you're stressed. Yeah. Instead of freaking out and not really taking a second to wonder why or understand why. Yeah. And to accept, and accept it. Like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You're stressed if you're going to get this job or not. Like, well, of course you are. It's okay. You want the job and you'd like to make the money from the job and you'd like the work from the job. And okay, that's good. So you're stressed about it. Right. I love you. <laughs> Do you say that? You say, I love you, buddy. I don't, but maybe I should. <laughs> you know, one time my therapist actually said, I want you to, I want you to wake up. What, what happens when you wake up? And I go, well, I have anxiety. What do you do? I, well, I lie there. Well, why do you lie there? Well, I'm hoping it will go away. Does it? No. So what do you do? <laughs> I lie there. I want you to get the fuck up. I want you to get a drink of water. And she also said, this was a while ago, She wanted, I want you to look in the mirror. I want you to tell yourself you love you. You love yourself. Yeah. Affirmations. That was, boy, that was hard because I was actually, I remember the first time I was actually trying to be cool about it. Like, I'm the only one in the fucking room. And I'm like, love you, dude. <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on, be say, yeah, hey, dude, love you. Finger guns. <laughs> you're fucking, you're awesome. Yeah. I was like, you know, and it's, it's it's very hard. That's one thing I'm learning how to do is just like kind of accept myself, love myself for all my faults. And that is the hardest, I think. There, when I was first getting therapy, uh, my therapist said the same thing. I had a, he gave me a sheet of affirmations. Um, and there were all these like, I love you. You're very good at this. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways. <laughs> The first one on the list was, I am enough. And at the time in my life when I started saying that, I would almost cry just saying those three words, like looking in the mirror and going, I am enough. It was so hard. Wow. 
Because I would immediately just be like, no, you're not, you fucking idiot. You're not, you know. Exactly. So that's where I would jump to. So to just kind of be like, I am enough. Like, even now, like saying it, it feels weird. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not. I need to do more in order to be enough. I need to. Right, right. Yeah. Jesus. Inside of You is brought to you by Brooke Linen. Even if you can't put a price on comfort, a sale definitely doesn't hurt. Brooke Linen's biggest sale of the year is here and bringing serious savings on everything you need to keep cozy. And this sale is big news for your comfort. Brooke Linen's entire site of super soft, seriously cozy essentials is on sale right now. Brooke Linen was created to bring dreamy comfort to every corner of your space. The price is so affordable, they may make you pinch yourself. Shopping doesn't get any easier than Brooke Linen bundles. Save more when you stock up on essentials for your space. Now's the time to get gifting. With deals on items for everyone on your list, whether you're shopping scents for a candle lover or grabbing a gift card, a.k.a. the gift that keeps on giving, this kind of comfort is always a hit for holiday. Brooklinen's comfort game is unmatched and their lineup keeps getting better. Five star sheets were just the start and their collection of cozy must haves now includes everything from dreamy decor to their newly launched slippers. I'll tell you, Ryan, I have the most comfortable uh, sheets that you Ooh. could possibly lay in. Ooh. Do you say lay in or lie in? Unclear, but it sounds comfortable. Both are comfortable. Uh, truthfully, uh, when I got Brooklyn and they, the sponsors always, they usually, if they're kind enough, they will send you something. They sent me sheets and I'm like, oh, I'll give them a shot. As comfortable as I've ever felt in a sheet. For sure. Uh, Brooklinen is just wonderful. Uh, I've heard from many people. I mean, this is a name that I think you've heard of before. Um, you got to give these guys a shot. Guys, do not miss out. Brooklinen's biggest sale of the year is here. Listening after the sale, you can still save. Visit brooklinen.com and use promo code INSIDE for $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com, promo code INSIDE. It's all about comfort for the holidays. Brooklinen is there for you. Inside of You is brought to you by M1 Finance. There's a reason they call M1 Finance the finance super app. This all-in-one app makes it easy as pie to invest, borrow, and spend exactly how you want. Build a portfolio of stocks or ETFs in minutes with their intuitive pies interface or use a pre-build expert pie that invests according to your goals. Investing involves risk, and M1 helps you invest according to your risk tolerance. Borrow against your portfolio with some of the lowest rates on the market, then use it however you want. Keep in mind, borrowing increases your risk and rates may vary, or stash your cash in their free digital checking account. It's fast, it's easy, and it saves you tons of time, and time is money. Switch to a sleeker, easier, and better way to manage your money. Plus, get $30 bonus to your M1 Invest account when you get approved and fund it with $1,000 within your first 14 days. And it's easy. You just go to m1finance.com slash inside of you for more info. That's M as in Michael, M the number one, finance.com, m1finance.com slash inside of you. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, All right, this is a good segue into metaphysical milkshake. Okay. Because I watched an episode and, you know, it, it, talk to me about it. Talk to me how briefly how it got started with, with you and Reza Aslan and how these two minds came to be and, and, and to make this show, that, and a show that you both wanted to make. Because I think it's, it's very important. It's, ultimately, it's like, what is our life? Why are we here? What's the purpose? What's yeah. it, like all answering all these questions? And you can't really answer all of them, but I guess to the best of your ability. But why did you do this? Um, so I started uh, about 11 or 12 years ago, a uh, media company called Soul Pancake that was a digital media company. It existed mostly, most people know it as a, as a very successful YouTube channel with three or 4 million subscribers. We had shows like Kid President, uh, My Last Days, The Science of Happiness, lots of that were viral videos that people posted all over Facebook and whatnot. So my first iteration of that was called Metaphysical Milkshake. That's what I originally wanted to call it because I've just always been interested in the metaphysical questions about being a human being and being alive. Why are we here? 
what happens when we die? What is, what is our purpose? But beyond that, like what is time and, uh, you know, do, do we have free will? And you know, so many metaphysical questions that intersect with psychology, spirituality, philosophy, creativity on a lot of different fronts, sociology. And so Soul Pancake went in its direction. It did its thing. I had a show on Soul Pancake for a short amount of time called Metaphysical Milkshake where I interviewed people. In your in, bus. In the back of my van, yeah. In the back of your van, and, um, which that I was want to talk about. The, yes. That was fun. But so I always liked the name. And then I knew Reza Aslan's work and we had bumped into each other at a couple events and we were having breakfast actually not far from here uh, in the Hollywood Hills. And, um, you know, we were just talking about life and, and we're like, God, this, our conversation should just be a podcast. And him and I really have the similar um, interests in terms of the topics that we want to discuss. And that started the process of us, you know, starting this podcast. Um, life's big questions, what it means to be a human being, you know, cause I, I feel like our, our country is so divided. Uh, people are at each other's throats. There's so much, there's this mental health epidemic with young people going on that is uh, really, uh, it's tragic, it's horrible. The anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, you read the statistics around kids. You know, it used to be the statistic that always has blown my mind the most is, um, uh, all, since they since they since the they started doing any kind of studies at all about psychology, the loneliest generation was always senior citizens, because a lot of, they're in old folks' homes and whatnot, or they're put out to pasture, or, what, or they're right. living alone, or whatever. That was always the loneliest generation. This shifted about eight years ago. The loneliest generation became high school and college kids. The loneliest wow. generation. Guess what? That synced up with smartphones and Absolutely. Instagram and social media. There's other factors, but those are, those are two it's really a, It's big a disconnect. Ones. It is a disconnect. They're not, they are feeling seemingly connected because you have Instagram. Oh, look. Someone I, liked me. I have 287 Instagram friends. It's like, they're not your friends. Mm. How many of them are really your friends? Four, three, zero, you know, yeah. zero. Yeah. So, Anywho, we just felt like these discussions are really important. Like we, we're trying not to make them academic. We try and like make them accessible to everyone. Um, but there's something that red state folks, blue state folks, everyone in between. Has something in common. Yeah, it's, a, it's, the, it's the human experience. It's right. what we were dealing with, you know, in, as with our shamans as cavemen and what we were dealing with in ancient Greece and- you know, through the through the Renaissance and then college campuses, it stoned out of your mind at two a.m. Like these kind of discussions, uh, they can unite us. They can bring us together. And I hear, like, when I, when I listen, uh, you know, you have people call in and ask questions and like, what what's the purpose of life? And you know, what happened before the Big Bang theory? Which I think you let Reza take the initiative <laughs> on that one. Uh, that's a, that's a tough question because I always think about that. I'm like, well, before the Big Bang theory, well, who created God? Well, then if we keep going, who no one created anybody, but there has to be something that created but if there something. Was, but if there was no time, if the Big Bang created time, then there was no time before the Big Bang. So there was no before the Big Bang. Right, that, that's what you're saying. You can't measure, you know, right, years right. or like. What's the one question that you always are asked and you don't really truly have the answer for? Um, Boy, that's a good question. What is the question? Asked a lot. I don't really have an answer for. Um, um, well, you know, an old, an oldie but goodie is um, uh, what uh, you know. Is there a god? You know, and prove there's a god or that old discussion. You know, which frankly is a boring discussion to me. And and you're never going to change any mind, anyone's mind by kind of making a series of salient points about whether there is a God or isn't a God. Like it, it works on a deeper level, but that that's one of the tough ones to always engage with. I mean, I have my answer. I, I'm very secure in that, but that that's a biggie. You know, yeah. you, on, you look it up on YouTube. There's, you know, there's those debates. It's endless. Are, are, and have them millions and millions of views. People are very interested in those. They're usually have their minds made up. So they're going in like, yeah. yay theism or yay atheism. <laughs> team theist, team atheist. Yeah. You said something about 
it was so, something interesting on one of the episodes where, I mean, not that you don't say anything interesting in other episodes, but you said something about, you know, people say, well, if there's a God, why is all there this evil and this death and uh, all these things? And I think your response was, well, I don't know, but what if we just all live in a utopia where nobody stubbed their toe and everyone yeah. was perfect and everyone was like, isn't that just as bad in a way? Yeah. And it just made, it was just really smart the way you, uh, you interpret it. Articulated yeah. And that's, that. and that's, that, that is, a, there's an interesting thing where there's this common argument among atheists of like, well, if there is a God, why is there so much suffering in the world? And that's an ancient question. It's like, well, so what would that look like? So does that mean that if there's an all loving God, that then there is a world in which there is no pain? Because there's no, not a world where anyone gets cancer. There's not a world. Is there death in that world? Or if there is death, it's always peaceful and it's in your sleep, <laughs> but you can't break your arm. Because isn't pain, <laughs> difficulty, anguish, challenges, tests, isn't that really the meat of being alive? Isn't that what being alive is kind of all about? Yeah. And speaking of the Dhammapada, the Buddha says life is suffering. This is one of the, the four noble truths that you know life is is suffering. So maybe we suffer for a reason we suffer to grow. It's like when you work out, when you're doing bench presses, not that I would know anything about that, but <laughs> when you know, you're know you tearing the muscle fibers to build muscle, right? right? When you break your bone, it heals itself by, by ha making more bone material. It's broken, it becomes stronger than it ever was. So right. You know, there's a lot of analogies that lead in that direction. You uh, you interviewed Larry King on the in the van. Yeah, in the van, yeah. And I love this. It was just like I mean, I think you even smacked him on the ass. <laughs> you, you knew him well. I just met him that day. <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. You met him that day, and I spanked he, him on the ass. Yeah. He seemed like he was your best friend. Well, I think I had done. It was like a. It was like a give and take thing. I went and did Larry King's show right. and then he came in the van and I did an interview. So. Well, you asked him these questions and I thought, I, I kind of want to hear Rain answer these questions that he asked uh -oh. Larry King. Mm -hmm. Define happiness in 10 words or less. Why, why are you, you, this is, I'm on the spot right now. This is it. I mean, you asked Larry King that. Um, okay. Uh, happiness in 10 words or less. Um, connection. Nature. Art, community. You're counting, Ryan. <laughs> you. Um, oh my God, uh, this is good though. You've already four. Those are big ones. I mean, smoothies. Smoothies are probably somewhere there. Yeah, it's somewhere in there. It's somewhere in that way. There's a few more. What? By the way, those are things I wouldn't have thought it like that. If you would ask me, I'd be like, I, I would have thought you wanted me to put a sentence together. Happiness is well, yeah. when we. I know, but I was trying to be. But that really was a scary. better way of doing it. Yes. Because those are important things. What drains your soul? What recharges it? What drains my soul is looking at my phone. Um, what recharges my phone? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Hey! -o. What recharges my phone is my charger by my bed. <laughs> well, actually, I don't have it by my bed. I move it in the hallway because I don't want my phone by my fucking bed. You know what I mean? Do you honestly keep your phone outside? I like do. outside of your room? I keep my phone outside my room. I bought a fucking alarm clock because I, I don't want to do I don't want to be reliant. So there's a tool, reduce anxiety. I don't want to wake up and just look at my phone. Wake up in the bling 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 the emails and the oh shit, right? I forgot to write that person back. Oh god, I got to call him. Right. Oh, oh, that sucks. So, uh what recharges it is um is really uh nature and, and connection. I really think it's all about, I use that word connection, but I think that the answer is always in connection. You know, whatever the question is, the answer is in connection. And that can be with your spouse or, or partner, um, you know, that can be with your with your family or with friends or, or a group, but we thrive in community with one another. And I think we, we wallow in solitude. Can you relate? I can relate. I think I can relate easily. Mm -hmm. What What's the biggest question you wrestle with? I guess my biggest question I wrestle with is: like, if, Am I Am I doing the right thing now? Am I spending? Am I putting my my energy in the right direction? Am I Am I doing the right thing? What is there something else I should be doing? Something like that. 
I feel like that too. I always feel like, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? I wish somebody could just tell me. Like, I almost wish I was just good at one thing, not to brag and say I'm great at a lot of things. But if I was just good at one thing, then I'd have no choice. I'd have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, purpose, I, 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 I don't even, I, I wrestle with that all the time. It's like, what's your purpose? You know, try to be a good person, try to give back, try to help those that are in need, try to, um, to but do something that makes you feel good altruistically. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And I, I don't, I still am unsure of my purpose. Mm -hmm. Maybe my purpose, I'm already living my purpose, doing this podcast, helping people. Maybe that's part of my purpose. I mm -hmm. don't know. There's got to be something bigger. What's yours? Do you feel like you have purpose? Well, yeah. I mean, I think this is where, I think where this is where God comes into, and I think the main issue with God is that how people define God. So if you define God as like, a daddy man, male figure who's powerful, kind of gazing down on us and is like, Ryan was good today, Michael was bad today, that kind of God I'm not talking about. But if I, if you're talking about like, like you know, the, the, the creative power of the cosmos that is within us and without us and flows through everything and uh, gives a kind of greater purpose and our souls are connected to that, so our bodies will drop away, but we'll continue into some other plane of existence onwards toward this all-powerful, you know, cosmic energy. So if when I feel good is when I feel aligned with that energy, whatever that is. I it's it's I've, obviously it's hard to describe, but it's more of a feeling than anything else. But I I, I liken it like to a sailboat where like you want to get over to Catalina but the wind's blowing that way. So you have to kind of tack, but, but you kind of like, if you feel the wind in your sails, then maybe you're headed in the right direction. And that's, it's a, it's an ineffable thing, the wind in the, the cosmic wind in your sails. So I try and be in that, like, is it, does this feel like I'm being taken in some kind of right direction, you know? Right. So one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm writing a book on spirituality, which is obviously a passion of mine. And, which is a weird thing for a comedic character actor from a sitcom to be writing a book on spirituality. It might be the first time ever, but I, it feels right. It feels like, oh, this is a good thing. This is something I should be doing now. This is- um, That's great. Uh, so that does feel good. My wife and I have a nonprofit in Haiti called Lide Haiti that educates girls in rural Haiti. When I do the work on that, I, you know, I whore myself out as Dwight, like I do these- in fact, there's a thing on prizio.com right now where I, I'm going to give an office tour through the San Fernando Valley of like our locations. Oh yeah, I saw that on Instagram, right? Yeah, I just, oh, yeah. I just posted it uh, today, <laughs> it just launched. Um, and and then I take all that money and then I give it over to these programs that are educating girls who can't read, you know, essentially. So and that gives you purpose. That feels good. It that just feel, feels, feels good. good. It's like, I'm never going to be like, if I do something like Cameo or something like that, I'll take that. I'll, I'll do I'll do those annoying videos, but I'm gonna send the money off to. to so those are some things, but like career wise, as an actor, I don't know. You know, do you love it to, as much as you used to? I don't. Yeah. I know that's what happened to me. I feel like uh, you know I'm I'm gonna do this movie and maybe do this, but I, there's something about it that just doesn't interest me as much anymore. Like I'm saying, yeah, what. A, what are you doing? Do you really love it? I totally relate. Who are you doing it for? I totally relate. Are you doing it for money and because people think you're really good at it? Is that the reason you're doing it? Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm kind of lost in that sense. I, I don't know exactly what I, you know what I want. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, I 100% I relate. You know, the, the way I put it is like, as soon as I discovered acting at like 16, which by the way, and I think we talked about this on the last time I was on the show. I, I could be wrong, but I vaguely have a memory of it. I did it for the girls. <laughs> of course. So uh, I moved to a new high school. They had a great acting program. And I auditioned and got in this acting class. And then I did this acting exercise and I made everyone laugh. And I was the new kid in the school. And the these cute girls came up and like, oh my God, you're so funny in that. Where, <laughs> where are you from? You're from Seattle? Oh, will you sit at our lunch table, you know, and hang out with us? And oh, are you going to audition for the play? And I was just like, uh, you know, just, okay. You did it for the women. <laughs> There was no art. There was no like, <laughs> uh, I must express myself. I'm in the ancient tradition of the shamanic storytellers. 
No, it was like, oh my God, this <laughs> girls, I was, before that I was on the chess team. I was, I was so nerdy and uh, in the orchestra and like all of a sudden these doors open. So that started me on my journey. But from 16 when I started and then into college and doing plays, then grad school for acting and doing theater in New York and then coming to LA and then doing, you know, wallowing away for a few years and then getting on the office, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just lived and breathed acting, anything. Like, I want to act. I want to play characters. I want to get cast. I got to move my career forward. I really want, I'm hungry to just be acting. Sometimes it'll pay. Sometimes it won't. It doesn't matter. I just, I yeah. need to be acting. Then it got caught up a little more with ego. Like, well, I should be getting this movie. And why am I not getting this opportunity? And I should be doing X, Y, and Z. And why am I not? But but I feel the same as you, though. Something in the last three, four years, I've just like... Yeah, I like acting. You know, I just went and did this project. It was fun, you know, and it's great. And the people were great, but it's like, and then it was done. I was like, okay, you know, um, I'll, I mean, I'll keep doing it. It 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 pays good, and it's fun, and it's nice to be around, you know, smart, funny people, and right. being on the set can be really fun. But I don't really have a desire to be on a TV show for years and being on the set, you know, twelve, fourteen hours a day uh for years you yeah. know i don't i don't fortunately i don't have to do that but yeah it's right it's, it's a shift it is a shift so what do you think it scares me it's so where do, a, where do you think that's gonna take you what so I, I, obviously you're a successful podcaster well, now podcaster, and you know I'm, I'm writing a lot so i'm mm -hmm. you know i have some pro projects we're pitching and things you know i like to write and um it's not to say that i don't want to act it's just like it just feels like something was lost I used to have that drive that you talk about. I used mm -hmm. to have that drive where I just always wanted to be the center of attention. I always wanted to be on set. I always wanted to kill it, crush it, the producers to be so happy and my agents to be making money and everybody to just be, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, well, you're still a miserable fuck. Mm -hmm. So what's happening there? What's going on there? Are you really enjoying? And it's not to say I didn't have any fun. I just, I don't, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. And by trying to figure it out, I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to continue and see how I feel and really see if there's still something there. Because there isn't – some people just love to be on set all day and just love to do it over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I – something was lost. I just feel like, wow, we have to do a six-hour scene now. We have to do this same scene for six hours. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. just is not appealing as, as – look, I'm blessed. I'm, I thank God I was on – I did some work and I made some money. And things would be different if I, if I hadn't. I'd mm -hmm. be still doing whatever I could. But now that I have that choice, at least for now, there's part of me that's just uncertain about where that future lies with, mm. with, with, with acting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a movie here coming up. But like you said, it's just, there's not that fuck yeah, yeah. feeling. Totally. All yeah. right. Uh, metaphysical Milkshake. Where could they find that, by the way? Anywhere uh, you get podcasts. Anywhere you get podcasts. Yeah. We, um, we're trying to put out an episode a week, which is hard. but it, um, it's Guys, it's really great. It really is. It, you know, I, I have a, a short attention span. And just hearing these guys talk about life and hearing people's questions and just talking about all the things that we think about is just so, uh, so interesting. So interesting. And I think you guys are really going to love it. Metaphysical. You're, you're very kind. Thanks. We just did. We just dropped an episode with Jason Isbell, the, the singer-songwriter. Do you know him? Yep. And uh, it was about what is music. And just kind of like trying to really sum up, like, where does music come from? Like, what what, what makes music music? Like, that that uh, trying to get to that spark of creativity. Why are why do humans have music? Why are why don't we just live without music? Like, what Ooh. what evolutionary purpose did music in our lives serve? Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're a if B.F. Skinner behaviorist, like music makes zero sense. It doesn't keep the species alive. doesn't propagate the species. Right. I guess you could say, well, some birds uh, sing because they're, it's a mating dance. So like- It creates know, joy. Frank Sinatra. Pleasure. But what does that have to do with propagating the species? Joy and pleasure. Have you ever made love during the Bee Gees? <laughs> like live? It's up Concert? to you. It's up to you. <laughs> I have not made love to the Bee Gees. Maybe I need to get on that. Nobody gets too much heaven no more. It's much harder to go by. I'm waiting in line. Uh, I always felt <laughs> self-conscious making love with any music on. Really? Because it always feels like... 
I, I, I just feel weirdly self-conscious. Like whether it's like I would have friends who would like get baked and have sex to like Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. But then there's always the <laughs> and buried white. And up Wizard of Oz too and sync it up at the same time. <laughs> Oh, wow. Is that? Is yeah, that they do. Pink Floyd, if you stick it up to the Wizard of Oz, it fits really strange. So that strangely. might be fun. <laughs> yeah, try Having that with both the of those. Wifey. Yeah. Sinking She's those like, who up. the fuck are you? Yeah. But I, yeah. Do you do, you, do, you do that? Is that, is that, um, is that I would sometimes think? listen to Mazzy Star while having sex. Yeah, okay. If I was dating someone, sense. you know. Yeah. I, but, but anything more ambiguous uh, or so, where you can't decipher the lyrics. Right. If I could hear... I'm all out of love. I'm gonna. I just. I can't get hard. My dick soft is the can, can be. That's just the way it's gonna be. My dick is so soft. <laughs> yeah. I can't make in love. <laughs> what am I with that? Uh, this is Rain Wilson. What year were was that People magazine oh my 50s God. top bachelors? Yeah, that was. Uh, when were you uh, one of the top fifty uh, bachelors? Fuck, a long time ago, probably two thousand five. Wow. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen years ago. Yeah, not anymore. This is called Shit Talking with Rain Wilson. This is Rapid Fire to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe this has already been over an hour. We're, we've always oh, been over an hour. Well, what, Ryan, I'm happy to stay longer if you need me. What, <laughs> no, this is amazing. But, Ryan, what, you've been taking so many notes. What the hell are you writing down here? I just, just, write, I just write it down just to sort of uh, keep track of like the things that we talked about. And uh, if there's anything the editor needs to know, then I have oh, it Oh, so this isn't like personal... No, this no. Rain's a piece of shit. I don't believe anything he's this saying is right like, now. This is like for editing purposes. This is for editing purposes. Oh. Yeah, and it's also if like there's something like, oh, this is really interesting. Boom, we're gonna put that in a clip when we put it on. Right. You also, know. I don't want to look idle. Do you still do those animation <laughs> things? I don't. But wasn't yours great? Yeah, I loved that. We should do another one. Maybe I'll do another one with you. Okay, great. I love those animation things. I had this animator out of like Norway or something that would do these animations and they did one of, of, of rain. Yeah, and you paid just a, a small amount of money. It wasn't, it wasn't incredibly expensive, but uh, you know, I was just like, but you know what? I want to do those again. I think that's a really good idea. Can you make a note? Can you? You're welcome. You've your got thing? a pad of paper. Write it down can, right there. Can you write that down? That's what this is for. Uh, Rain Wilson, shit talking, rapid fire shit from talk. my lovely patrons. I love you out there. Thanks for joining Patreon and giving the podcast a little more. Uh, Raj, favorite movie or show you watched over the past year? Uh, we've been re, uh, re-watching The Sopranos. and Never I seen it. I can't tell you how much delight that show gives me. It I'm going to watch it. It just gives me the tingles. It is one of the greatest comedies <laughs> ever made. I'm not kidding Okay. You. The, the sense of humor, the wry sense of humor that runs throughout that show is sensational. I have to watch it. What oh, am I doing? What are you doing with you? I wish I could put myself in your body and not ever have seen The Sopranos and watch it for the first time. It is so good. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? You and I are gonna start watching it. Okay. And like, I'll go, hey, I'm on episode three. I go, oh, I'm gonna catch up and we can talk about it. At least I'll have somebody to watch it with. Okay, I'm in. All right. I've never seen it either. I and you're rewatching it, so I'll see. Oh my God, Rain. Oh my God, it's so good. The performances are cr crazy. Leanne P., what is something people would be surprised to learn about you? Um, I'm a pretty good tennis player. We've been talking about playing tennis. Yeah. Um, but I don't think people would know that. And they'd be like, oh, there's a portly middle-aged gentleman. But it's like, oh, he could, he could play tennis. He could swing a racket. I love it. Betsy D., did you enjoy interviewing Billie Eilish? Yeah, I totally did. That was so cool. It was like, oh, look, it's the most famous person in the world. And she's a huge <laughs> Office fan. And, Isn't that uh, awesome? Yeah. And it was so cool because we interviewed her in her childhood home and she was still living there in a bedroom about this size. She's like the most famous person in the world. She was living in a bedroom this size wow. in her parents' little bungalow in Pasadena. Jesus. Um, are you jealous of Jenna Fisher's uh, office show? And do you wish you would have done it? That wasn't a question. I just asked that. <laughs> Did you just make that up yeah. and pretend to read that off yeah. the piece of paper? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a jealous. I wish them the very best. I've I guessed on the show a lot and put in my input about the episodes. I love Jenna and Angela so much. They are true. They are just the dearest, sweetest, kindest people in the world. Funny, just amazing, supportive. Uh, wish them all the luck in the world, but I, that would be torture for me to have show up each week and go over the old be. TV show that I did. I, I would be a lot wanna, of work. I know it's a lot of work. Uh, Emily asks, who's been your favorite actor to work with so far in your career? The one that you could name, the one that comes to mind. I get one. Well, I, I got to go with Steve Carell, right? I mean, wow. Yeah. Love yeah. him. I love Steve. Yeah. Um, Steve's difficult to get to know. I wouldn't say that we're like intimate 
buds, but we text and he's a very sweet guy. But what a privilege and an honor to have done 160 episodes with him, to improvise, to watch him work. I mean, he's one of the greatest actors the in the, uh, he's one of the great greats. You're and, one of the greats. Well. You're one of the greats. I'm like, I'm like a B plus. No. Steve is like A, A minus. You know, he's yeah. on the next level. There's- Alice and Janney, I was doing this thing on Mom, a recurring part where I got to work, where I was played her therapist, actually. She's like Steve. She's like on this next level actor. She's like, there are yeah, very few that are on this first whole other shit. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Joey Mack, what was it like working with Rob Zombie and your single takeaway from that experience? Um, yeah, House of a Thousand Corpses. That was my first kind of lead in a movie I got. We shot that in like 2000. Um, It was awesome. Takeaway from that experience was uh, uh, hard. (laughs) Uh, What is the takeaway from that experience? I I, I loved that experience. I mean, Rob is an awesome dude. He's going to be doing the Munsters reboot. That would be really cool. I'm definitely lining up to watch that. I'm watching that that shit. Yeah, Yeah. I didn't even look at my notes barely this whole time, except for those questions. Um, you did very good. You're very good at this. I was nervous interviewing you. Why would you Well, be you're nervous? just incredibly smart. I'm not as smart as you. Now, the people are going to get mad because they're like, stop saying you're not smart. I'm just saying, Rain's a very bright guy. He's well read. I'm not. But I like to listen to you and you have a lot of insight. And uh, I don't think that I'm smarter than you. I think we're two very. In fact, I don't think that people uh, are really not smart. I think that, you know, we just, we all have a balance of, you know, it's like a D&D character. You know, you've got strength and charisma and dexterity and, you know, roll the dice. Did you ever play D&D? Yeah, sure. So I think everyone, but it all kind of adds up to around the same level. Like, I think that humans are the same way. So we have the, you know, we have emotional intelligence and- Street smarts. Street smarts and yeah. stuff like that. I think we're, but- What do you think about Ryan? He takes a lot of notes. I don't know. My my mind's not made up about Ryan yet. I can't quite figure him out. There's not a lot of info. Bobby Lee said he looked like an eagle. Oh, because, yeah, the side angle. The side angle said you look like yeah, an eagle. I don't I, can, I, I get that. Could you see an eagle? It's I like can't a dark really see eagle. It. The dark eagle. The dark that would be a good screen name for you. Dark eagle? Yeah. Dark eagle. Code yeah. name 74. Dark eagle. It's my secret agent name. Yeah, I yeah. like that. This has been a real treat. I, I really appreciate you allowing me to be inside of you again. I hope you'll come back maybe a year, a couple years later. Uh, I love your podcast, Metaphysical Milkshake. Guys, please check it out. I think you're going to really enjoy it. It's uh, it's worth watching and listening. You can watch or listen. Uh, either way, I love being inside of you. Thanks for being inside of me. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll do this again in another two or three years. Can we play tennis? Let's promise to play I tennis in really the next year. I really liked it. I have texted you a few times. It hasn't worked out. Do I have your, do I have your number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happened. Are you saying but- that I didn't text you back? No, you did, but you're like, oh, how about Thursday at 8.30 a.m.? I'm like, no, I can't do Thursday at 8.30 a.m. But- <laughs> Rosenbaum here. Hey, Rain. Are you te- you're texting me right now on the air? Yep, there you go. <laughs> okay. I love you. Thank you. Okay, thanks for having me. Bye. Well, you learn a lot. You can learn a lot from a Rain. You sure can. Yeah, I really enjoyed the podcast. Hey, guys, if you really enjoyed the podcast today, if you're a big Rain Wilson fan, you never listen to the podcast, please subscribe. Give us a shot. Uh, I think you'll you'll dig it. There's a lot of great episodes in the can. There's a lot of episodes coming up. Um, and, uh, you know, Jason Alexander's was a real success. That was really great. Anthony Michael Hall was a success. Um, so, you know, go back, listen to episodes. And um, thank you to all our sponsors. And uh, if you're interested, hopefully you guys like the sponsors and you could, uh, you know, Use the codes that we give you and uh, supports the podcast. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, the handles are, again, if you want to follow us at Inside E Podcast on the Instagram and the Facebook and at Inside E Pod. Uh, if you want to get any merch, go to um, in the Inside of You online store. We've got Lex Luthor stuff, Smallville stuff, Inside of You stuff, new merch coming out. So always be checking on that. And uh, the band, my band Sunspin, go to sunspin.com. You can get shirts and mugs and other stuff. We also have lunch boxes there too. But uh, do you have a good week, Ryan? 
Yeah, man. Uh, Gearing fine. up for Thanksgiving? Gearing up for Thanksgiving. Where are you going? Going to uh, my parents' house in Northern California. Are you excited? I am excited. I like going there. Does Amanda like your parents? She does like my parents. She yeah. does? Yeah. Do you like your parents? I love my parents. That's really nice. Yeah. You get along with them. They were good parents. They showed you love and affection. They did. They did. What's that like? <laughs> it's nice, man. Man, that sounds groovy, man, bro. It's so nice, man. It's so uh, groovy. Uh, no, it's just it was. It's nice, and uh, I mean, what's kind of nice is that they are not in like my childhood home, so which would have been in the valley in Los Angeles, but they moved up somewhere else, and so it's kind of like a vacation. It's a little vacation. How many hours yeah. away? A uh, seven-hour drive. What's the address? No, okay. <laughs> I actually don't know. I'd love to meet your family. I just know where it is. You could tell you're, you know, you're just a really genuine good guy. I like Thank you. you. You're just a really humble person. I'm very humble. Go on. You, well, you are. And, Go on. Uh, and I'd, love to meet, I, I'd love to meet the parents, the, the two that are sort of responsible for your, <laughs> uh, for who you are today. Oh, yeah. Well, if they're, if they're around or you want to come to Thanksgiving, it's not too Well, late. I'm having a Thanksgiving dinner right. at my house. But I would I love know. to meet them sometimes. So make that happen. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Uh, thank you to all my patrons, my lovable patrons. I just did a YouTube live with just my patrons. That's part of the perks of being a patron. You can go to patreon.com slash inside of you. Support the podcast in other ways. There's there's merch. There's uh, I send boxes to folks every few months. Um, we do YouTube lives, uh, discount on merch. Uh, but more importantly, the patrons really give back and uh, I'm able to do this podcast. They just, they give to the podcast, whether it's a dollar a month or $5 a month and some are incredible and give a lot more. I, I really appreciate it. And I want to thank you all of you um, for that. Again, I'll be at the LA comic con uh, December 4th and 5th with Tom Welling doing a Smallville nights on December 4th. I hope you join us. We have a lot of fun. And uh, why don't we read off the top patrons? These are the people who gave uh, a lot of uh, a lot of coinage to the podcast to keep this freaking thing going. <laughs> Thanks for the coinage. Thanks for the coinage. Here we go. Uh, Nancy D, Leah S, Trisha F, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Mama, Lauren G, Nico P, Jerry W, Robert B, Jason W, Kristen K, Amelia O, Allison L, Raj C, Joshua D, Emily. Uh, what? Emily. <laughs> F. S, Jesus. CJP, Samantha M, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jen S, Jamal F, Janelle B, Kimberly E, Mike E, L, Don Supremo, 99 more, Amira, Santiago M, Sarah F, Chad W, Leanne P, Janine R, Maya P, Maddie S. These guys are just, every one of you is just amazing. Belinda N, Chris H, Dave H, Spider Man, Chase, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray, Charles. Ray Charles, yes. Yeah. Ray H. Hi, Ray. Tabitha T, Liliana A, Michelle K. Hello. Michael S. Hello. Talia M, Betsy D. Hi, Betsy. Claire M, Laura L, Chad L, Rochelle, Nathan E, Marion, Meg K, Janelle P, Trav L, Dan N, Big Stevie W, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Super Sam, Coleman G, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Liz I, Jeremy C, Andy T, Cody R, Sebastian K, Gavinator, David C. Uh, a few more here. And uh, thanks to all these people as well. John B., Brandy D., Yavor, Camille S., Bono, or Bano, or Bono. The C., the C., Joey M., Willie F., Christina E., Adelaide N., Jeffrey M., Omar I., Lena N., Design OTG, Eugene and Leah, Leah, or Eugene and Lee. Huh. Like a, like a comedy It's L-E-A-H. I think it's Leah. Yeah, it's Eugene Leah. and Leah. Yeah, it's Leah. Chris P., Nikki G., Corey, KTB, Patricia uh, Maria N. Maria N. Uh, I love all of you. I can't thank you enough for supporting this podcast and keeping it going. I never thought I'd be doing 180 something podcasts. I thought I would quit after three and no one's going to listen. I stuck with it. You stuck with me and I appreciate it more than you possibly know. Um, from myself, Michael Rosenbaum, here in the Hollywood Hills of California, along with Ryan Taylor in the Hollywood Hills in the Hollywood Hollywood Hills. Hollywood. That's right. A little wave to the camera. Nice. We love you. Thank you so much for uh, making me a part of your day and and giving me the time and listening and supporting the podcast. Thank you for allowing me to be in each inside. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to be a, inside of each and every one of you. Have a glorious week. Be good to yourself, um, and much love. Ryan, anything? That's it. That's it. That's all we got. Yeah. Thanks, guys.